Hailing from Bawalpur district of Punjab, Abdul Rahman owns a tea stall at a rural settlement in his hometown, but passionate love for nature and wildlife made him as an amazing nature survivalist and wildlife rescuer who along with his team members have saved around 10,000 venomous species including snakes and scorpion in Khalistan Desert during the last one decade. He has also set up a group of wildlife rescuers who respond to the call of finding of any scorpion or snake in area within Khalistan Desert and in its vicinity and rush to the site for saving of the reptile. Fat-tail scorpion is found in different parts of Pakistan, but its finding and research can help in developing its anti-venom, observed Sahabzada Muhammad Jawad, a scorpion researcher doing PhD from USA. Jawad has collected and preserved around 700 kinds of arachnids at a refrigerator in his home for study purpose and has called for establishment of a modern lab for extracting highly precious venom for treatment of fatal diseases besides earning foreign exchange through international trade. He also requested Abdul Rahman for preserving of the fat-tailed scorpion for research purpose. Jawad said Pakistan has rich diversity of scorpion which needs to be tapped for extracting venom and has a lot of demand in international market. In Pakistan, he continued, there is no modern laboratory for extraction, preservation and research of scorpion venom. If government establishes a lab, it will help in carrying out research on rich biodiversity of arthropods in the country besides other benefits we can get from it. Scorpion venom is used for treatment of fatal disease including cancer and for rheumatoid arthritis because of which it has great demand in international market. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe my channel press bell icon button for more videos. One third of the food we eat is at risk because the climate crisis is endangering butterflies and bees CNN, bee populations are declining. More than half of the bat species in the United States are in severe decline or listed as endangered. And international scientists recently announced the monarch butterfly is perilously close to extinction. What these three creatures have in common is that they are all pollinators. Without them, fruits, vegetables and other plants wouldn't be pollinated, and that's a major problem for our food supply. One out of every three bites of food that we eat, is directly connected to a pollinator, Ron Magill, the communications director and a wildlife expert at Zoo Miami, told CNN. Around 30% of the food that ends up on our tables gets there because of things like butterflies, bees and bats. Losing those critical populations could also mean losing some of our favorite foods. Apples, melons, cranberries, pumpkins, squash, broccoli and almonds are among the foods most susceptible to the pollinator decline, according to the Food and Drug Administration. Bees, in particular, are responsible for pollinating around 90 commercially produced crops, the agency reports. Even tequila is at risk. It's all so intricately connected, whether you're eating the food that is directly pollinated or you're eating something that depends on that pollinator, Magil said. It's a domino effect. In other words, if you are eating fried chicken or pork chops, those chickens and pigs eat fruit, vegetables and other plants that depend on pollinators. And the climate crisis has taken a toll on pollinators. While more intense and prolonged drought is the most obvious impact, a growing concern is the effect of extreme heat, particularly on butterflies. Because butterflies are some of the most sensitive insects to changes in temperature, they are considered the canary in the coal mine, when it comes to climate change, Magil said. Warmer temperatures cause plants to bloom sooner, which is out of sync with when the butterflies lay their eggs in metamorphose. This will mean the flowers they depend on for food will have already bloomed out, leaving little for the butterflies to feed on, which will in turn greatly impact their ability to reproduce and survive. It snowballs into a cyclical problem where the butterflies can't get the food they need to reproduce nor can the plants get pollinated, causing both to suffer greatly. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe my channel press bell icon button for more videos.